Good afternoon to one and all. We are going to present this piece of research about the neural linguistic approach. I hope you find it interesting. People who are interested in learning a language can be placed in two different contexts, second language or a foreign language. The Harvey research focuses on the former, since the participants were studying Spanish as a second language. The neurolinguistic approach is a recent approach that seeks effective learning and uses the language by the knowledge of memories and the cognitive system. The neurolinguistic approach focused on the ability to use spontaneously the language that is the implicit competence and the conscious awareness of how the language works, the explicit knowledge. Despite the effective results that the neurolinguistic approach has been shown, it is important to check that the neurolinguistic approach's efficiency and identify some difficulties that students could have at the time of learning a second language. As the University of Veracruz implements the neurolinguistic approach for teaching Spanish as a second language, the possibility to verify satisfactory learning is at a reach. In other words, the impact that the neurolinguistic approach may have on students who are learning with the approach is still unknown in this context. As I said before, there is a gap in the literature of the neurolinguistic approach, and that is the impact of students that are studying it under the umbrella of this approach. So our objective is to identify the impact of the neurolinguistic approach on students who are learning a language at the school for foreign students. In what follows, there are also specific objectives that seek to address the Harvey investigation. In order to achieve the research goal, the following main research question and subsidiary ones were set. Such question will lead the procedure and approach to research in this inquiry. The basis of the neurolinguistic approach, this was created because some researchers found difficulties in other approaches and methods. They found that traditional methods only generate explicit knowledge, and the aim of learning a language is to communicate with it. So, cognitive psychology suggests that for real learning of a second language, it is necessary an automatic use of the language, that is to say, an implicit competence, implicit and explicit memory. The former refers to non conscious memory abilities. This means a wide variety of skills flagged as a non-critical thinking. The latter means to non conscious memory abilities. In language learning, it is the awareness of structure in sentences, and um, by structure, I refer to how a sentence is constructed. Then we have the implicit competence and explicit knowledge. Explicit knowledge plus practice is equal to implicit competence. This means that the learner has to learn knowledge of the language through metalinguistic, then practice the previous knowledge by doing some task, and finally, they use the knowledge for, for communicative activities. The base of this was that if the learning practices with the knowledge already learned, the knowledge become well established in mind, which means that eventually the students will use the language automatically or non consciously The language learning and language acquisition. It is essential to separate these terms. Language learning refers to the learning of a non-native language in the environment of one's native language. Crashing refers to the language learning as knowing the rules of a language while language acquisition is to develop the abilities of a language by using it in a natural communicative situation. A current example of acquisition is the way that babies learn the language. So how the language acquisition in the neurolinguistic approach works? Well, Terrell mentions that for acquiring a language, it is fundamental to be not aware of the learning, nor the rules of a language. Instead, it is necessary to feel the correctness. In the neurolinguistic approach, the teacher focuses on reaching the long-term memory of the learner. To make it possible to reach the long-term memory, it is necessary the use of repetition and oral focus teaching. That's why there is an importance of interactive activities. An essential factor for developing the ability to communicate in a spontaneous way is the interaction between students. German has demonstrated that there are specific teaching strategies recommended using the neurolinguistic approach, which are accuracy, purposeful, listening, and fluency. For fluency, an important aspect is to reply in complete sentences. Also, 
This facilitates the building of the internal grammar and the ease with the second language is used. Accuracy is achieved by consist an instant or a correction of errors and having the students reuse the correct structure orally. And finally, we have the purposeless listening. This strategy replaces the normal oral comprehension exercise. It is a matter of encouraging learners to constantly listen to what the teacher and the other learners say. Now we have previous study of the neurolinguistic approach. Internationally, since 1998, the neurolinguistic approach started to be applied for teaching French in Labrador and Newfoundland, Canada. In 2010, the neurolinguistic approach was implemented in China at the South China Normal University. Due to the success that neurolinguistic approach registered in China, this approach began to be implemented in a Taiwanese and Japanese university. Well, now the methodology. The qualitative research seeks to explain a current situation and only describes that situation for that specific group. Thus, in order to have a better understanding of the impact of this approach on the student's learning process in the classroom, a qualitative approach was employed. Also, a case study was chosen because it is wanted to cover contextual condition and it is believed that is relevant information in this context. In this research, the use of interview will be essential to collect the data, although it will include open-ended questionnaires to assess their thinking after the course. Finally, utilizing the promise of grounded theory, that is, interpretation is sought for the comprehension of the individual or collective action of the actor being studied. The information gathered were analyzed with a comparative analysis between the information interpreted from questionnaires and interviews. Also, the hypothesis related to the codes and points that were found on them. The participants in the Herb investigation were selected from a group of students at the School for Foreign Students that were learning Spanish as a second language. The participants were university students of the Chongqing National University of China that were exchange students in Jalapa, Veracruz. All of the participants speak English. Two of them have a language certificate in the language and the range of the age of the students is between 21 and 25 years old. None of them have studied Spanish before starting university. Therefore, two only have a Spanish language certificate and an A1, according to the European frame. Now, a students have a B2 certificate. In order to gather the information, the researchers contact four of the students by using message application Considering that in China, most of the message application did not work, it was complicated to contact them. After trying several times with different ways of communication, a connection was achieved. We did this with four students. The fifth interview was face-to-face -face because the participant was in the city. For the last interview, safety measurements were taken into consideration. Here we have some extracts of the interview in the part of the repetition in the classroom to activate the internal grammar. The interaction between the students, it was a must. That's why they have developed more comprehension on the Spanish language. And this left them to be more aware of the language. In this part of development of the speaking and listening skill, we can see that most of students make a wide difference between the classes on China and the classes they take here in Mexico. And the difference is very important for their development because of in China, they only take notes and here in Mexico, in class, they can practice the language. Also, we have some factors that affect the student's language acquisition. And one of the most important factor is the interaction between students and teachers, because in China, they do not have this interaction, while here in Mexico, this interaction was made most of the classes. And finally, some difficulties faced during the Spanish course. There were two or three difficulties, but the most important one 
was the lack of vocabulary students have, so that they were not able to understand sometimes the teacher. In conclusion, the student that learned Spanish notes some contrasting elements. These were the difference in the interaction with classmates and teacher. The focus on speaking and listening skills. Students were able to learn Spanish and improve their abilities in the target language. Also, their mood from the beginning to the end changed dramatically. First, starting without a clue about their new classes and this modern way of teaching, and as the time passed, they felt more confident in themselves. So, in this context of a school of Spanish as a second language, the neurolinguistic approach is really effective for the quick adaptation of students.